do not adjust your screens. Do not flip to another podcast. This is not a mistake. I am hosting Kevin Pollock's chat show today. My name is Sam Levine. We're going to get through this together. Uh, greetings, hello, and welcome to the show. Uh, it's episode 207 on this uh, June 15th, 2014. Happy Father's Day, everyone. Uh, Kevin Pollack is off in the magical land of Ohio and cannot be here today, uh, but the show must go on. Uh, I'm happy to say he's alive and well. He's not, he's not uh, gagged and tied up in my basement. Um, he will be back, but in the meantime, I'm at the helm. Uh, I would like to say hello to Jason McIntyre, who is filling in for me and Jamie, sort of. Hi, Sam. How are you, friend? I'm well, thank you. How are you? I'm great. This is, this is very exciting, what we're doing here. Yes, it is. I'm really looking forward to the next hour or so. Mm -hmm. It's going to be great. Yeah. Now, what are the odds that Kevin is watching on some sort of uh, tablet or, or phone device and shitting his pants right now? Uh, I would say... Good, very good. The odds are high. high odds. The odds, odds are, are high. very high. I think high. he may be on a plane, but if that plane has Wi-Fi, yeah. oh, so help me. We God. might be fucked. We're in a lot of trouble. Oh yeah, we're in an awful lot. He's of trouble. He's probably very disappointed in both of us already. No doubt. Mm -hmm. uh, all right. Well, uh, I just want to say then thank you to uh, Kevin Pollock and uh, and Jamie Fox for letting the two of us uh, goof off in here today. Uh, it's going to be a lot of fun, and. Yeah. I'm going to get right to it. You should. I'm going to get right to it. You're I'm doing very, great. I'm, thank you. I'm very you excited this. about our guest. Woo! Thank you. I appreciate that. But I'm very, very excited about our guest. And here's a little intro. Oh, nice. Him. It's a proper intro. Our guest today might be singularly the most recognizable that guy actor, which admittedly seems like something of an oxymoron. Over the past 20 years, he's turned in memorable performances, both large and small, in over 90 different television and film projects. His feature work has seen him collaborate with such directors as Martin Scorsese, Clint Eastwood, David Fincher, Albert Brooks, John Woo, and the Coen brothers. Wow. But among all his achievements, he's no doubt most proud of his role as Will Hayes, the dissociative identity <laughs> disorder sufferer and mentor on the quickly canceled NBC drama Do No Harm, as it finally gave him the chance to work with me. Please welcome John Carroll Lynch. Sam, it's such a pleasure. Pleasure to be with you again. <laughs> we shared Thanks. such... Such limited but very powerful screen time. Truly, we did. In Do No Harm. Um, and uh, and for those, I like to I like to give a bonus to our viewers who actually watch the show, okay. uh, rather one? than just the listen Do no to harm it. Show or this no, one? this this, this one. very yeah, podcast it, that we are it. on. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Josh, can you put up the the thing? There it is. That's the best I could get for video evidence that you well, and I really ever. Do, yeah ever actually shared the screen together. It's amazing that it doesn't, I mean, it doesn't look like you're standing in front of a green screen. No. Today, but it actually was. <laughs> no, I paid $50,000 to have that green screen set up. Wow. And Seems shot like completed. A lot. I think it was worth it. I think it was worth it. I think. Well, I'm off. very touched by it, and uh, I'm very touched by the fifty thousand dollars. You could have sent me fifty grand, and I would have stood behind you. <laughs> yeah, but this was way better to just spring on you. No, yeah, that was great. You it was know. awesome. Yeah. It was awesome. I could, I could almost feel you there. Oh, good. Oh, there it is again. Thank you, Josh. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I See, forgot what I was asking you. Uh, uh, I think it was about your boss. I think I was trying to figure out where your boss was. Yeah, I, I vaguely recall uh, that. This is was it? at the moment where everything was falling apart. For. You well, really, the whole really show. Let's be honest. <laughs> Every aspect. <laughs> Every you, aspect me, of that the show. network, the yeah, show. Yeah, it was really, it was really classic. Yeah. Rarely do you get an opportunity to be on the worst-rated premiere in the history of network television. You know, we no longer hold that title. We, what it, happened? It took just a scant year. But Who beat us? some uh, uh, that's Lucky the problem. Seven, maybe. I think it was Lucky Seven. Sweet. Now that you mentioned Thank you, Lucky Seven. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> you guys are great. John is of course we love to the fact you guys. that Do No Harm was the lowest rated in season premiere in modern television history yes. until yeah. this past season. Yeah. So I'm I, I was, In a way it was kind of a weird honor. It was a weird honor, right? Yeah. Uh, it was really truly I mean, it's one thing when you go from like We've got an audience to the second week where you've got no audience at all. Mm -hmm. This was like <laughs> no, no nobody audience. cared. And then we were like, oh my God. What if you put on a network television show and nobody cared? <laughs> <laughs> but then somehow, somehow even fewer people watch the next week. Well, you know, once you're behind on like, a show like that, I thought we you're never going to catch up. No. I thought we were at the minimum. 
I thought we'd start out there was less. There, we could have yeah. gone lower, yeah. Yeah. and we did. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but you know, they aired them all over they the did. summer. They did. They legged them out. They legged them out. They had to fill time somewhere. Yeah, I guess. Did you get the chance to watch any of them? I did not. Oh, I did right. not watch Do No Harm, okay. I must say. I'm one of the, uh, I, I like to stick with the majority of people. I see. I like to stay <laughs> with the crowd. <laughs> you, you felt and the, I sensed the public has from decided, the yeah, the and I don't want to go decided. against them. Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, I, I wonder what our Saturday ratings were. I wonder if we ever broke a, like a 6, a .06 or something. I, I don't know that they even posted them. I'm sure they had it somewhere. somewhere. They've got to they tell somebody because yeah. they've got to give money back on the advertising That's based true. on the amount of fewer people That's they expected. To have. You know what? They actually they ran them with no ads. <laughs> just straight they through. Just straight through. It was either this or dead NBC Air. It was just so the just, peacock and the Indian in the headdress with the tomahawk, that standard, that, was that stock yeah, photo. Yeah, that's right, yeah. It was that or do no harm commercial free. That's right. That's so right. I'm glad they went. They went with us. Um, <laughs> well, uh, then, then let's let's just let's hop right into it, man. Okay. Uh, so speaking of your TV work. Okay. You you have quite the the body of television work. Uh, yeah, I, I don't think I've done. Um, I don't know. I think I've done maybe 200 episodes of television. That's of uh, that's insane. It is kind when of when you crazy. think about it. Yeah, I mean, your your introduction made me feel like, wow, that guy's really that guy works a lot. Well, he I'm really, sorry, but no, it's that's, that's amazing. It's true. Yeah, I've done about 200. I think about 200 episodes of television, and uh, um, and I've had I've had the good pleasure of being on a lot of failed television shows. Oh, um, that's you know that's been an honor. You, you and me both. Yeah, yeah. I've, I think I've been on I've been on one show that's gotten from I've been on one pilot that got to the third season. Wow. Uh, but I've never been on the third season of the show. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think I know yeah. the show you're referring yeah. to, yeah. which was a, a a critically beloved and and uh, watched show. Uh, I don't know which one you're talking about. What oh. are you talking about? I was talking about uh, the Brotherhood of. Uh, oh, we didn't get no, to the fourth I was, episode I was, of that. I was we teasing. didn't get to the fourth I was episode. Of that. It was his body of proof. Yeah, it. body of proof. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> that I was thought the, the critics liked it. I know the, well, the audience. Well, no, the audience good. seemed to like it and, yeah. and everything, and uh, I've really enjoyed working on the show. Okay. Um, it was, and it was the third season where they decided to retool, and right. and uh, you know it's a very funny thing when they do that. It's kind of like, and I, I, I mean, I hope that all the network television heads are watching. I'm sure they are, right? Because everybody yeah. watches. They're in the chat room too, right? Yeah, they're, they're in the chat room. Yes. Okay. NBC <laughs> Prez is on right now. Perfect. Yeah. He says hi. Hi. So uh, I, what I don't understand is when they say, okay, we're going to retool the show and we're going to yeah. add elements, they do two things, one of which is they confuse the people who don't watch the show and they piss off the people who do. So you basically yeah. lose both audiences, both the potential audience that you want to get. and Because yeah. by the time you're in the third season, everybody who wants to watch that show is watching. The they're show. on board. Yeah. yeah. And if they're not watching the show, you know, when was the last time anybody in this room said, you know, I'm going to start catching that show in the third season. I'm going to start doing that. Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I want to see. I've ever said that. I want to well, see what season eight of Grey's Anatomy is like. Yeah. <laughs> well, season, I'll you give know? you that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you don't jump in then, do they? No. I mean, all, I mean, especially when you're talking about retooling, because I know, like, for most people, yeah. nobody saw the first season of Breaking Bad or Mad Men when it aired. Yeah. No. But that was one of those things where, oh, it's on demand. You can catch up. It's only yeah. 10 episodes or whatever. Yeah. And then everyone was caught up. But, but what they didn't do was, oh, you know what? I'm Breaking Bad. Suddenly, uh, he's just a pot dealer we now. Go, and, we got to go in a different direction. Yeah. And, and Jesse's gone. Yes. And we've recast him. Yeah, you can't Could do that. Could Jesse get a, I don't know, a dog or maybe, yeah. you know, something like that. That'd yeah. be great to have a dog. <laughs> 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 yeah, that's, I think that's where they went wrong. In Breaking Bad? In Breaking Bad. Jesse needed a dog. Yeah. That was that's, the problem. That's it. He would have been me. a totally different guy. This whole <laughs> world would have changed. Would but have binge so watching does change all of that, right? Yeah. I mean, my wife and I are now watching the first season of Law and Order. Wow. Yeah. Really? Yeah. yeah. We're going to watch them all. It, I respect that. Now, yeah. I know they have occasional characters on Law and Order that will come back and there are weird through lines, but it's enough of a serialized. Oh, you could turn them. You could literally, you could literally throw all of them into a deck. Yeah. You know, shuffle them <laughs> and throw them out. And he would, you know. Yeah, that's the only way to watch. You know, occasionally them. it would be Anthony Anderson. Occasionally it would right. be Jerry Orbach. <laughs> a lot of the time it would be Jerry Orbach. Well. But you know, George Zunza thrown in there as a Joker. Wow. You know, but no, we're doing them kind of in order. And um, I don't know why we start. I, I think we because my 
My daughter just had a baby, and she uh, she has. Thank you very much. It was a very nice uh, grandfather's day. It was Aww. a grandfather's day today. Congrats. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. And um, when she's nursing, she puts on Law and Order. <laughs> I think that's a great Yeah, so she got my wife to start watching it, so she's like, okay, well, we'll watch it now. Yeah. So we're watching it, you know, and Netflix allows you to watch all 67 yeah. years of it. Now, I'm, I'm not a doctor. Okay. But um, uh, cortisol, the yes. stress hormone, Okay. I'm told if uh, nursing mothers have too much cortisol in their bodies, yes. it can get through the, the breast milk. Okay, so you're assuming that this is a stressful thing for her. What I'm daughter. saying is maybe she should watch Something less stressful television I, while I she's I kind of think that there can't be anything less stressful than a 20-year-old Law and Order. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Just just to be at peace with Jerry Orbach and... Well, and it's that, but it's also like, you know, you're, you're, going, through the, you're going through the basically the entire Rolodex of yeah. New York actors. You know. That's what they would so you say. Go, hey, look, there's Bill Macy on the first ever uh, Law and Order. Was very Bill Macy on the very? He was on the pilot. Now, are of we Law talking Order. Bill Macy? Bill Macy or William H. William H. Macy. Okay. You not Bill Macy. William H. Macy was on it. Thank you for the clarification. No, I wanted to be sure because I have not seen the pilot of Law and yes. Order. Yes. And I wanted to have a good mental picture yeah. of. Are we yeah. talking Maud Bill Macy? Maud Bill Macy or that's a totally the cooler Bill Macy? Vibe. <laughs> yes, it is. That is a very different vibe. <laughs> they were going for the older than Jerry Orbach <laughs> demographic. They were trying I, to get older than. The, I really they appreciate. They want to get the, the seventy to eighty yep. year old people yep. to watch. There's, I think there are all. We'll have all of twenty uh, viewers, listeners who will understand the difference between it's our Bill Macy's. It's going to be so great. Like a week from now. Yeah. Like some guy's going to turn this on. Yep. And laugh his ass off about it. <laughs> Just one guy. Just one guy. One ninety year old oh, guy is going to go. Oh, that mod. Oh. Don't you just love Adrian Barbo? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, okay, so uh, you've never made it past season three, but I do know that on another show, another long-running uh, show, this one, a sitcom, yeah. uh, they, you, they brought you in, as I like to say, as a pinch hitter. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then that became something yeah, entirely. Yeah, that show was on, Drew Carey was on for so long, yeah. I was on... 75 episodes of that show. That's and I wasn't even on a third of the show. Yeah. That's uh, it was on for 9 years and you'd you'd be surprised at how few television shows and also what television shows got to 9 years. 9 years, yeah. And um yeah, that was a really good group of people and um and a super funny group of people, obviously. Yeah. But I think I think the whole show was kind of like a circus. Mm -hmm. I don't think you really tuned into the Drew Carey show to find out what was going to happen to Drew. I think what you decided was, what, what are they going to do this week? Are they going to have a bear driving, or what's going to happen? <laughs> you know. I remember that episode when the bear drove. Yeah, it was a great yeah. one. Yeah, good, um, good one. So then let's, as I said, let's jump around. Now okay. we're going to go back to the start. Okay. So a young. John Lynch. Yes. Is graduating Catholic University of America. Yes. 1986. Wow. And says, "Well, what you am know, I going to do?" You know, I graduated uh, from uh, Catholic U in D.C. and I, uh, I at the time, Chicago was like really a uh, hot theater market. Yeah. And um, and I was uh, um, very much afraid of going to New York. Uh, I didn't feel I was I had enough uh, experience to do that. So. Hmm. I decided to go to Chicago. Um, there was a girl involved as well, well and she was I going didn't to want Chicago. To ask. That I will didn't want to ask. sometimes it changes. Absolutely. It changes the venue. Yeah. Let's just say that didn't work out. Uh, uh, but uh, yeah, Chicago I started. The city did. The city. The city still my, works. My favorite city in this country. It's a really great town. It really is. I really do. I love that town. Uh, and uh, I loved living there. I ended up getting jobs at little theaters there and started working in the theater. Um, in some capacity, and then I got an audition for the Guthrie Theater in Minneapolis. Huh? So I ended up going to the Guthrie on a touring show, and I, I think everyone will be surprised that it was, uh, I played the creature in Frankenstein, which is a stretch for a guy my size to play something so. I'm, know, I'm not you know, familiar with this Frankenstein. Not familiar with it? Frankenstein? Yes, it's a, it's a Bram Stoker, no, that's Dracula. <laughs> It's a. Uh, it's not Mary Stuart Masterson. It's no. not. It's not Mary she Stuart. She wouldn't Masterson. have written it. No. No. It's I a think. Mary Shelley. It's Mary yes. Shelley. Mary Shelley. Yeah. Uh, anyway, 
Um, so they did an adaptation of the show, and I ended up <coughs> touring with the touring company, and then coming back to the Guthrie and joining the company. Mm -hmm. I was asked to join the company, so I was there for like s seven years before I before I started before the snow bait came in, which was a rebate. Like New Mexico and Minnesota were the first two uh, states in the United States to offer a film rebate oh. mm. program. And so the year I did, uh, uh, they, the, the year they offered it, f you know, five or six films came in to Minnesota. And uh, I started working on them. And the first one I got was with Kevin Pollack. But you can't just yeah. gloss okay. over, I started working on them. How did, how did this happen? You, well, you I, just, I put myself, you know, I theater, mean, you, you, know, you walk into, uh, you know, I'm doing theater. Okay. And it's a group, uh, it's a very strong theater community there, very strong acting community in, in Minnesota. Chicago. In Minnesota, in, in Minnesota, Minneapolis, okay. and um, and uh, so they start bringing these films in, and one of the first ones to come in was Grumpy Old Man. Hmm. So uh, I came, you know, I auditioned uh, through the local casting director, and I ended up getting, I think, a two-line part. I was the moving man in Grumpy Old Man. So uh, I was actually on the set with Kevin Pollack. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well. Yeah. Some some fucking nerve of him to not be here today. Well, you know, <laughs> uh, actually, it kind of makes sense because this was about as much interaction as we had I that, see. that day, too, so it all works out. So he's it's kind of kind of kind of perfect. Actually. Yeah. So really, he's been keeping you at an arm's length for over twenty years. And <laughs> I, I got to say, I was uh, you know it was it was a very intimidating circumstance. You know, you got yeah. Walter Matthau and Jack Lemmon and you know Anne Margaret and yeah. uh, you know Kevin was just off of I can't, I'm trying to remember what was. I mean, he was fantastic in Avalon. I think he must have been coming off of uh, A Few Good Men. Yeah, it was close to then. Because uh, yeah. they shot I that. Just, first, time I remember, I first time I remember going, that guy's awesome, was in Avalon. And I don't know if you've ever seen that movie. But it's, oh, it's a it's fantastic a movie. movie. He's great in it. Movie. Aiden Quinn, everyone. Yeah, it's, it's, really, a, it's, it's a, a tremendous film. If you haven't seen it, check out Avalon. Yeah, it's really good. And, um, and I had, uh, you know, I had done, I had the first, one of the first film jobs I had was actually before I left DC. It was uh, I was an I was an extra in uh, Tin Men, uh, or Pushing Tin, right? Pushing, Pushing Tin. tin. Pushing no, tin? wait, that no, can't possibly men. be right. Tin Men. Yeah. Which was uh, I get those two mixed up. Uh, You're in both. By yes, the way. that's the reason. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's the reason. Tin Men, which was uh, which was uh, Danny DeVito and yeah. Richard Dreyfuss, uh -huh. Barry Levinson. It was the second uh, uh, of the Baltimore trilogy. Oh, right, the first being uh, Diner, Diner uh, Tin, Tin Man, Man, and Avalon, essentially, were the three movies of the thing. So I was, I was in a pool hall uh, behind, I'm very blurry in a pool hall with hair. It's the only time I've appeared with hair. Really? That was my own. Oh. On, uh, uh, on film. How many times have you appeared with hair that was not your own? Half a dozen. Really? Yeah, half a dozen times. How about that? Yeah. All right. Good to know. I'm gonna it's going to be good for the chat room. See if they can, see if they can, they can if figure they can out which ones they are. Name the, yeah. the the John Lynch movies with hair. Now, yeah, that's right. Uh, and be careful. It's you know John Lynch is an Irish actor for the secret of our own inner. John Carroll Lynch. John Carroll Lynch. So that might throw you off if you go to IMDb. Um, now I or DirecTV, uh, by the way, because DirecTV one night gave me credit for some of his films. How nice. Great. Now uh, Jason. Apparently, McIntyre. I worked with Gwyneth Paltrow in uh, in. Tr in uh, um, in a movie, I was her love interest. You were great in that. You were Thank wonderful. You. Thank you very much. You were, well, that yeah. was Pushing Tin Men, right? That was Pushing Tin Men. Okay, that's what I thought. Uh, <laughs> pushing was in the title. I can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> pushing Gwynnie, I think is what it was. Uh, now, uh, our own Jason McIntyre puts together a magnificent dossier. Oh my God. Uh, so I want to. I just want to ask you about this. Now, this says you were. Uh, uh, an American film uh, director, writer, musician, occasional actor, best known for uh, the films Eraserhead, uh, The Elephant Man, and yes, Blue Velvet. Yes, yes, that's right. Is that accurate? I'd say that's fairly accurate, with okay. the exception of all of it and the the name at the top of it. Oh, is this not? Is this? No, that's somebody else. That's, uh, that's, uh, it's all accurate, though. Yeah, you know what? That's David Lynch. It's David. So this is useless oh. to me. This is useless to me. Shit. I don't know what to do with this. Okay. That's yeah. My bad. No, that's completely understandable, that's, right? I, oh I no, we look. I, just I mean, it's, Lynch. it's yeah. deadly. Yeah. It's deadly. Oh, uh, we look exactly the same. No, I've got the correct <laughs> dossier here. Uh, okay. You are uh, an American author. Your first book was published in 1963. Uh, Several-time winner of the O. Henry Award, the National Book Award. Uh, you're uh, you're big, big, big in uh, uh, feminine Very literature. Prestigious. 
What I Lived For, Blonde, uh, three-time Pulitzer Prize. That one was like pulling the rocks out of my soul. You know what? This is Joyce Carol Oates. Get That's, closer. Um, done, a, done a play of hers. But, really? uh, yeah. Well, you, yeah, put a, you pulled a lot on Joyce Carol Oates. That's all. Well, she's got a lot. Do you follow her on Twitter? Is she really on Twitter? And she's great. She's very, very serious on Twitter. She's dead, dead serious on Twitter. Well, that's what Twitter is for. By I the way, thank you for too. humoring me in I those terrible, terribly ill-thought-out bits. Well, actually, uh, <laughs> the, you know, I mean, I thought they were hysterical myself. Well, you know, we're la laughing on the inside hysterical? Deep, deep on the inside. I appreciate it, John. Yes. Uh, um, I, I may have gone too far. So, before college, uh -huh. before the move to Chicago yes. and the move to Minneapolis, yes. Yes. where did you first realize that you had, as Kevin Pollack likes to put it, Hey, look at me, disease. Oh. What, what said to a young John Carroll Lynch, I, I like acting, I want to do this, I want to stand in front of people and say things and entertain. You know, the first, uh, I've told this story a lot, and I think it's fairly accurate in terms of when. Okay. I was uh, 13 years old, I was going to be going into high school, and my brother and sister, my brother was on stage, my sister was backstage in a high school production of Camelot. And it was at the high school I was going to go to. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, it was a really good production of that show, so much so that they actually remounted a high school production at a community theater. Wow. wow. Anyway, I'm watching the show and my brother comes out and he's, he ha has always had a beautiful singing voice and he was playing one of the nights uh, and he was singing, uh, you know, I forget the very beginning of the show to set it up or maybe the beginning of the second act, I can remember. But I was like, why do I think he's a British knight now? Well, how did, how's, that, how's that possible? Because I know he's a jerk. <laughs> and, and suddenly I'm thinking, no, he's a, he's a British knight in Arthur's round table. Yeah. And I 100% believed it. You were in. And I was like, how does that happen? How, d how does somebody become somebody else? Yeah. Right. Like, just because they say they are. So you're 12, 13? 13. 13. Okay. And uh, so I was, I was fascinated um, by that idea. Sure and I wanted to see what it was like to be somebody else. Uh, and so, you know, I started becoming interested in that and uh, I started auditioning for plays uh, as soon as I could, really. Wow, so it, all school though, school plays? Uh, school plays, yeah, but there was a place called The Original Scene in Denver at the time. It was run by a priest named Dennis Dwyer and it was actually funded by the Catholic Youth Services, but it was an all Denver public school. I mean, anybody could audition. Mm. And they did uh, two and then four shows a year, um, musicals. And basically, if you auditioned, you were in. Oh, those are, those are the best. Yeah, yeah, they're the best. And so I started doing um, those right away. I mean, I started, I can't remember, the first play I was in was um, Guys and Dolls. Ooh. Uh, and uh, we, and there were, I don't know how many gangsters, about 800 gangsters. <laughs> uh, and then, you know, I started doing plays from there and, and uh, I did about 16 plays in high school because I did them there and I also did them at my school. Wow. So um, I did when, whatever I could get on stage for. So these were kind of like the open mic nights of theater, <laughs> you know what I mean, for kids. Sure. If they were like a kid's open mic night. Yeah. So in these shows, as you say, if you audition, you're going to get in. Yeah. Would basically all, all there was a lot of spillover, and then you know, oh, you'd be in the background. No, here, there'd be this guy yeah, there'd thugs. be a lot of that. There'd be a lot of that, but also, um, you know, there were other plays too that were more competitive than that that I was I yeah. was auditioning for. But yeah, and uh, and uh, you know, I played all kinds of different parts, mostly the old guys, because when you're tall, you play all the old guys. Sure. I wouldn't so, know anything you know, about that. Yeah. I'm well, assuming. Sam, when you reach a particular height. Yes, John. In high school. Oh. Everyone assumes you're older than you are. I would not know, know a thing about now, that. Now, yeah. for you, it was probably the other way, the opposite. which was what everybody assumed you were younger. I was carded yesterday. Yeah. You were carded yesterday. Yesterday. For yeah. cigarettes. <laughs> Actually, this is true. <laughs> about a month and a half, two months ago, I was carded buying a lottery ticket. Wow. When I said to the guy, it's 18 for lottery tickets, he goes, yeah, I said, so you look at me, and you legitimately think I might be 17 or younger. I was like, do you, do you have ID? Yeah. And I said, no, I have ID, and I'm going to show it to you. I just want to get make this I clear just first. Clarify. Yeah, yeah. Why you're asking me for ID? Yeah. It never that I was rarely carded. Well, lucky you. Yeah. I saw a high school production of Greece once, where it was the same thing. Where it was, if you show up, you'll be in the show. Yeah. Yeah. But rather than have 
uh, Kinnicky and Zuko and whoever, rather than have there be 60 guys in the background for Grease Lightning, they thought we're going to be fair about this and everyone will get a speaking role. But the only way to make that happen was every scene, every time it went to black and then came up again, all of the characters there were new people were new actors <laughs> played by new actors wearing the same where the headed. same jacket yeah, yeah. the same headpiece yeah yeah so it was so did it work here's the problem and this is this is 100% true just one problem i'd never seen greece before oh. that production. Yeah, that would be confusing. So I had no idea what was going on. Yeah, I think they had probably were under the assumption that you'd seen Greece before. I guess that was the that was the <laughs> <laughs> that was the downfall. So you were constantly restarting the play. Yes. Like and you were constantly going, wait a minute, who who are these people now? New characters. I, I don't understand this at all. There must be a series of gangs in the school. <laughs> this this place must be dangerous. overrun with gangs. It's like it was the school from Stand By Me. Yeah, it's and, a really and, dangerous and all place. And singing. Yes. They seem very happy That's to right. be here. Yeah. So I'm glad that you avoided productions like that. No, th we did double cast, so two people played. Oh. You know, like there were like there were two Horace Van de Geldes in Our Hello Dolly okay. and two Dollies. In so the there same, was that going on. In the same show. Yeah, so, so we would rehearse. So one would be before the break, the other would be... No, no, no. You'd get a whole show. Oh. And then the next then, night, the other person Oh, no, that's whole. fine. Yeah, you're it's, okay with that. I'm fine with that. It's just in the middle that you'd prefer not it's to It's between that. scenes one and two. Yeah. Then, I'd okay. prefer to have the same One of my sandy. favorite stories about that time was uh, a kid was playing the, uh, the Nazi, uh, the Gestapo uh -huh. officer who, uh, who was trying to catch the Von Trapps. Oh, I thought in, in Greece, Sound of the, Music. The Nazi no, let's in jump Greece. forward to Sound of yeah, Music. <laughs> All of the high school musicals kind of run into a. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Know, the Sound of Guys and Dolls on Greece, uh, something like that yep. could be the title. But we'll the title. Um, anyway, Sound of Music was the show we were doing, and this guy was doing the Nazi officer, he was doing the Gestapo officer. So he's on stage, and then he's got to enter from the house for his next entrance, mm -hmm. which is you know they're they're at Spoleto. For those of you who are keeping track of the story of Sound of Music, they sing, you know, at the festival. I think it's the Spoleto Festival, but I'm probably wrong. That's in Italy, so it wouldn't be there. Anyway, um, they're singing at the the music festival, and then they escape. So they're on stage, and then the lights go out, and then they've vanished, and the Nazis storm the stage. So he's from the back of the house. On his way around the theater, because it was a theater with no way to get around except outside. He was stopped by the cops because he's wearing a Nazi armband and a long black, you know, like a fedora and a long black thing. And he's like, "Hey, can I see? What are you? What are you doing here?" And he's like, "This 17-year-old kid." He's like, I'm, "I'm doing a play inside right now. I'm not a Nazi. I'm just trying to make my entrance. I, know, I just need to get to my entrance. Can I get to my entrance?" And he made it. Oh, he did. He made it. Well, lucky him. Yeah. Otherwise, you know, it's. Uh, that's not a uniform you get away with anywhere, pretty much. I don't know. Pretty much anywhere. I, for, for that show, if they're going to have 17-year-old kids wearing the they Nazi really they should just build a little extra piece. Or maybe they should just, like, pretend they're not. Like, they should have a different thing. Yeah. Like or a, not a Nazi symbol. Right. Or at the very least, give him a robe to put on over the... So uh, now what would you A big think? winter coat. What would you think of the guy? <laughs> You're a cop sitting there having a burrito. <laughs> <laughs> right? You just got a nice burrito down the street, and you're yeah. like this, and then this guy in a robe yeah. with a fedora walks out yeah. of the building. Yeah. I think that would, might be I, causing some serious problems. I, I would just think Hitler's letting himself go. <laughs> you know what? Just let him, nobody ages gracefully from the, from the Third Reich. Just, I yeah. really gave a lot of Jewish cha on you the did. Reich yeah. there. I don't think that's how, I'm making it my own. That's I'm taking it back. No, I'm taking it back for the Jews. That's good of you to do that. Yeah. You're taking, you're taking the right <laughs> back. <laughs> it's going to mean something different now. I'm taking it back. <laughs> you're putting the ch the in huh Reich. Back in Reich. <laughs> putting the ch huh in Reich yeah. since 2014. Yeah, since 2014. You heard it here first. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, so, so, uh, so okay, so you, you, 
So I start doing theater, plays in high so school. The love of theater was always there. Yeah, and I go audition for a couple of places for college. I mm -hmm. went and auditioned for Carnegie Mellon. I did get in. Um, oh. I did get into Carnegie Mellon, but Catholic University gave me money, so that was the difference. That's a no-brainer. Uh, and my sister was already there. Oh, my sister Nora was already there, so that's one of the reasons why they, I got the Catholic discount. Very nice. You know. The second kid, yeah, you give me a little off. I don't know. They probably pay you on the sixth one, you know. You know, buy five, get the sixth one. And that's not tough for strict Catholics. No, for strict Catholics, it's not. No, no. no I was the last of four. Oh, all right. Yeah. So I went to Catholic University, got a BFA in acting, which was essentially a liberal arts degree. Sure. And uh, ended up doing, uh, ended up starting understudying in D.C. Mm. and then moved to Chicago. And but then Chicago. Uh, yeah, I mean, I always wanted to do it. I yeah. always wanted to act. That's great. Yeah. Now, from what I understand, you only saw yourself as a theater actor. Yeah. For I, I didn't really ever conceive of doing films. Yeah. And why not? Was that you just weren't interested? You just thought because I know in in New York, yeah, uh, uh, where I I grew up just outside of New York, and that's where I started my acting. There is I don't want to call it a divide, but there's no, the there's theater kind of a, world. Yeah, there's kind of a divide. And then there's actors auditioning for TV and movies and commercials and stuff. Yes, yes. And it's it's really it's almost it feels like two separate things. You know, it's funny. It's people who do theater a lot, mm -hmm. and people who don't do theater a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I don't know if the divide is really, I mean, like if you go through the Law and Orders like we're going through, you see virtually every theater actor in in New York sure. on those, yeah. and most of them are just trying to make health insurance. That's I was going to say, yeah. So uh, I, I swear to God, I don't know how many children were paid for by, you know, the health insurance that was, you know, that was created by Law and Order, but I would bet you it's in the tens of thousands of children. I, I'm, I'm sure you're right. So they should all send Dick Wolf a check, is what I'm saying. Because he he's strapped for money. He is he has been hurting. Gambling problem. Oh no, that's Huge terrible. Gambling problem. It's heartbreaking, really. Oh, it's heartbreaking. It's like the, the Charles Barkley of yes. procedurals. Yeah. He likes to dump. He likes to get his money in cash. Yeah. And they dump it in a dump truck uh -huh. on his front lawn, and then he rolls about in it for a while, and then he pours gasoline on it and oh, lights it on fire. Oh, this is that sounds like a terrible. And he spent tens of thousands of dollars every day doing that. That's a terrible, terrible problem. It is. It uh, is. And what's worse is, he he lives in the poorest part of Long Island. He does. And the poor, the children... He owns the poorest part of them. <laughs> he owns it. And the poor children, they walk up and down yes. the street, they can't get past the gate to grab any of that money no, before he sets fire to none it. None of them. So Dick he Wolf says, is a monster. He says, look at this, look at this, look at this. Look at this. And, and then let it, watch yeah. it burn, yeah, baby. Watch it burn. Watch it burn. Watch it burn. Oh. That's how he came up with Chicago Fire. <laughs> <laughs> and see. <laughs> I always wondered if Dick Wolf on medical forms has to write Wolf Dick. Probably, probably. You'd think it'd be Wolf Rich. And I'll bet you like at some point he chuckles every time. <laughs> like, Wolf Dick. <laughs> Wolf Dick. That's me. That's me, I'm Wolf Dick. I'm Wolf Dick. Um, <laughs> okay, so we are in Minnesota. Yeah. Uh, grumpy old men. So I do Grumpy Old Man, and it's a couple of lines. And uh, I mean, you're, I'm, I mean, I can honestly tell you, I had no concept of what, you know, camera does or what to yeah. do, and uh, that was clear from the very beginning of the experience. And then I had a couple more movies where I just only had like one. I had a line. I had a line. I had the line in The Cure, which is a movie with Brad Renfro and uh, Joseph Mazzello. Yeah, I'm familiar. yeah. And uh, uh, the line was Afton. That was, that was my part. Okay. Where are you headed? Was the question. Let's let's reenact oh, it now. I'll You'll say <coughs> where are you headed. Yep. Okay. Whenever you're ready. Uh, just, just a second here. <clears throat> where are you headed? Afton. Thank you. Yeah, that was. You know what? No, no need to ever watch the Cure. I'm sorry. Oh, did take okay. your time. Take your time. Take a moment. Okay. No, that's very. The actor's process is, is his own. Yes. Um, so that was really helpful to me because I could watch the apparatus. You know, uh, I, sure. I could spend a day watching how it's done. Yeah. And then it slowly occurred to me that no matter what film set you're on, they're always built the same way. Mm. They're, all, there's a, they're like a Roman camp. 
Hmm. They're set up exactly the same way. It doesn't matter where you are. They're set up exactly the same way. Yeah. And so about the third, third or fourth one, I was like, oh, I get it now. I get who I'm supposed to report to. I get, you know, mm -hmm. who I'm, you know, I get how, to, how it works, at least generally how it works to be there. And then I got to learn a lot more over the course of, you know, the last 20 years. But, sure. but, the, but the apparatus is really confusing for a theater actor because, you know, you're usually, you usually walk in and there's seven people and you walk on a film set, there's 200 people. Sure. So it's, it's much more confusing. And you don't have to do your own makeup. N no, you don't. Which, no, you don't. That's my biggest fear with the theater. Is doing your own makeup? I couldn't. You couldn't I'm, do your own makeup? No, I'm hideous. I don't believe you. I bet you could. This isn't even my face. I agree with him, Sam. I think you could. I mean, what, what, would, what would you have to do, first of all? With that? Look, that? At, him. look at him. No, well, he's, a, he's a statuesque, if that's what you're saying. All right. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I appreciate it, but... You shave yourself, I, right? Mm, not great? Not, not great. great. Okay. Not great. Yeah. I have this blind lady who lives next door who does okay. it most of the time. Okay. She's very good. Okay. Some of the time. Listen, so here's what happened. Yeah. So then you're doing the, you're doing the cure. You're doing yeah, and the then I, old men, yeah, and then, and then, I, and then uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I, uh, I'm back in, I, I was going to leave and go to New York. Oh, um, this, and, now you felt you were ready for New York. Yeah, I felt like I'd kind of hit a ceiling, you know. Okay. And I, so I went to New York for a little while, and I started auditioning there, and things were going okay. Things were going pretty well as far as auditions were concerned. Any law and orders? Uh, no, mm, no, they no. Weren't going that way. I never did a law and order. Yeah. Never did twenty years. Yeah. Never did a law and order. But anyway, uh, I uh, I then uh, got an offer to do a season at the Guthrie, which was terrific. It was a terrific season, so I oh. went back and did it. And. Uh, I'm in the midst of that season, uh, one of my friends, Bob Davis, uh, said, you know, there's this uh, movie the Coen brothers are doing, mm -hmm. uh, Fargo, you should really read it and audition for it, because there's a part in it for you. So yeah. um, I read it, and uh, I ended up um, going to the local casting director, Jane Brody, mm -hmm. and then on to um, John Lyons, who was the national casting director for the film, and then I met the Coens. Ah, and this is all in... All in, All in Minneapolis, and if there weren't a snow bait, I don't know if I would have even been considered. That's absolutely true. That's so we're talking. If about they didn't get ten or fifteen percent back from yeah. the Minnesota state government for my services, there, so we're talking like an outliers scenario. Pretty much, where so many things Pre have to line yeah, up for this much. situation to yeah. present itself. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, absolutely. that's that's great. Yeah, it worked out. It worked out okay. Yeah, not um, for the other guys. Not for the other guys. No, no, no. No, I think about them. Do you? Sometimes I do. They were, they were almost, they almost. They were, well, almost got that. But they were missing one thing. The 15% tax cut. The <laughs> 15% tax cut. And that magic that is you. Oh. Uh, that indescribable Peshaw. John Carroll Lynch. Peshaw. So, okay, so now it's, now so, it's the big deal. So now I, I do this movie, and, um, and obviously, you know, it's a thrill. And yeah. they're great. Fran's terrific to work with, uh, you know, and uh, working with them is, it was really my first, like time to spend more time than one day on a sure. movie set, so I'm 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 uh, I'm excited to be there, but I'm also just like, wow, this is this feels really cool. Everybody's really on board with the process. Mm -hmm. There doesn't seem to be any kind of fuss or muss about it. They're just going about their business. It feels really good to be there. It's a very tightly run ship. Sure. You don't want to change a word because their their dialogue is so good. And and uh, and then I started doing other movies, and mm -hmm. then you realize. Oh, they're like really good at it. Yeah, you got spoiled. Yeah, they're really good at it. So then, then you see the the way things can go crazily, like uncomfortably, sure, strangely, where people are kind of jockeying for positions of power inside the Ooh. process. I mean, it happens all the time in any business. I mean, I, 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 uh, I mean, anybody who works in film thinks films, television, or whatever, thinks, well, we have this. You know, there's so much backstabbing. There's so much. Like, try a corporation once. They're crazy. Yeah. Those people are nuts. Yeah, no, I, I, I don't ever hope to have to get a real job. I like, I like So far, so good. I like what we do. Um, this is not This is not real. a real job. No. Let me be very clear no. about that. Yeah. There's no health insurance here. Yeah. Um, so now on Fargo, Norm Gunderson. Yeah. Uh, so you had... Uh, be, given your extensive theater background, it's, yeah. uh, it's in the nature of, of the theater actor to develop uh, a backstory 
for your character to, yeah. to work off of generally. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And so you had a, a pretty good backstory for your character. Well, Fran and I met for lunch mm -hmm. uh, and chatted about what we felt was the case. And right. um, we came up with this idea that maybe he was on the force, mm -hmm. maybe they met uh, there, and that he wasn't really into being a, a, a cop. And then um, so he stopped being one and yep. started doing what he wanted to do, was mm -hmm. being a wildlife artist. Uh, duck, duck stamp painter, mm -hmm. which are real people, by the way, I, no uh, and uh, uh, and uh, and that's what we came up with, you know, this idea. And uh, we get on the set the first day, mm -hmm. and uh, having a, the first scene is in her office, and my friend Bruce Bonney, who was playing Lou, comes in, and he's talking to her about the case, mm -hmm. and I'm listening in, like, oh, that's interesting. And Joel and Ethan go, no, nah, he doesn't really, he doesn't really care. <laughs> really? Yeah, it doesn't. No, it doesn't care at all, really. Because we were talking about this, you know, cop. No. 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 Okay, then. All right. Okay. All right. Okay, so he doesn't care. Okay, then that's the choice. So then I start not caring about that. Mm -hmm. And so that, you know, smorgasbord scene, I could care less about her work. I'm mm -hmm. eating my fricassee. Mm -hmm. And uh, then I'm doing the other scenes where they're, they're more straightforward in terms of that. Um, but uh, they're so good. The, uh, you know, most of the time, you know, they've worked on the script so beautifully that there's yeah. not really a lot to talk about in terms of stuff. But the one scene that we did talk about a little bit was uh, the scene in uh, where she gets up for breakfast and she's eating breakfast with me, and then mm -hmm. uh, she goes down and the prowler is uh, frozen and doesn't yep. start. Um, so we get to the set and we're, you're going to be sitting here, okay, and she's going to be sitting there and she's going to go out and, and everything and then they say, okay, and, you, and there were two breakfasts. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was like, oh, no, 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 he didn't, he said, I'm going to, I'm going to make you some eggs. That was the line. He didn't make himself eggs. Right. He made her eggs. Yeah. And they looked at me, Joel and Ethan looked at me like, and Fran goes, no, that's right, he, he made her eggs. And then I said, and, you know, after she leaves, he'll finish her ex. <laughs> <laughs> and they looked at each other. Didn't say a word. <laughs> yeah, do that. Wow. Uh, <laughs> Ethan said, yeah, do that. And so we did that. That's pretty brilliant. Uh, it was the only time that it wasn't a, like, mm, no, no. No. No, no. Well, they, um, but you know, it's nice to score a little bit. Absolutely, yeah. that's that's a, a memorable uh, scene in the in the film. They, they, every it's scene like in that, that movie is perfect. I mean, when you watch that movie, and you know, I, it's hard to believe. You know, when I, when I watch the movie, it's hard to believe I was lucky enough to be in it. I mean, it's it's a spectacularly perfect movie. It really is. It really is perfect. Yeah, perfect. and the scene right before the breakfast, where uh, where you wake up in bed together. Yeah. And then you force yourself to get up, and then yeah. you're sort of sitting with your back yeah. to the camera, and then there's a noise. Yeah, you hock a loogie. Yeah. That was my wife's idea. Because <laughs> she said, I'm woken up next to you every day for... Pretty much. We, were, it wasn't, we weren't married then. We were still dating. And, okay. And, uh, and we were, uh, we were, she was helping me with the scene. She's a marvelous actor, Brenda Wheel. Wonderful, wonderful actor. And, and uh, we were rehearsing the scene for my audition, and she, she said... You know, you should really like. You you make this noise sometimes. <laughs> you should really throw that in, because because it's really like it would be really funny if you did that and then said, "I'll make you some eggs." Yeah. <laughs> so I was like, "Okay, that's good." good so that, so you also brought that to the table. Yeah, my so wife. I brought my wife's talent. You brought your wife's talent to the table. <laughs> to the table. Well, that's brilliant. That's just brilliant. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, uh, I I could not be more jealous. Uh, than, than, than of you for getting to not only work with the Coens, but uh, turning in such a great, wonderful, memorable, fantastic performance. Well, thanks. I mean, I, I really, I mean, I tell you, it's, a it's been a blessing to me throughout. And so I, I come here to L.A. Uh, basically, I did one more season at the Guthrie, half a season at the Guthrie, and then I basically sold my house and came out here to see what there might be. And because uh, right after I did Fargo, it was like all of a sudden, oh, well, you know, if the Coens hired him, he's okay. So mm -hmm. then I did three other movies right away, back to back. And for about a four-month period before the next season started, I was making a living as a film actor in Minnesota. So that was kind of crazy. So I was wow. like, well, maybe I should try that. So I sold my house and came out here. 
and um, and uh, it was only about six months. I got a couple of jobs. I did a I did a Frasier. I got a couple of jobs, and then I started. Uh, then Fargo came out, hmm. and uh, things started to go pretty well. And I came back because my wife was still working at the Guthrie, and uh, we went to a, uh, a fundraiser for the theater. And one of the guys uh, who was there was a p politician, and we were chatting. His wife is an actor, and he said, "So, what are you doing to market yourself out there? You know, in Los Angeles? What are you doing?" I said, "Well, um, be in an Oscar-nominated movie." Uh, yeah, that's it. That's yeah. pretty much my marketing campaign. Yeah. Um, I was pretty fortunate. Yeah, that's a pretty good deal. Yeah, pretty you lucky. Can, you pretty shake lucky. It. You should try that. I, I have. Did not work out the same. What was your what was your Oscar nominated film? Uh, I was in Inglorious Bastards. Oh yes, you were. But uh, which I think, like both, is technically an Oscar winning film. It is an Oscar winning film. As is Fargo. Yes. At the time, it was only Oscar nominated. I see. Uh, but uh, but unfortunately, unlike you and Fargo, um, all of my lines were left somewhere else. Did you um, did you happen to be uh, sleeping next to a person who wins Best Actress in a film during *Inglorious Bastards*? No, I think. Were any of your scenes like that? Were you asleep with potato chips? Oh, no, no, no. I had nothing, nothing like, like that. that. I had nothing like that. Did you kiss Michael Fassbender or? I mean, off on, camera. On camera. Oh. On camera. No. 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 You should really try that. I would love to. He's dreamy in person. Or is he? Yeah. Only in person. Yeah. Because <laughs> on film. On film, I don't hideous. think it, I don't think it, it, tra it he transfers. He is hideous on film. On the, on the picture. Yeah, I don't know what happens. It's like a monster. Yeah, it's really awful. Yeah, the face of a monster. Yes. And the soul of a child. <laughs> um, <laughs> the face of a monster. <laughs> the soul of a child. <laughs> Michael Fassbinder you, in. You, you tell him I said that. And you tell him I said that. <laughs> um, so real quick before I go to the mid-roll, uh, are you watching the FX? Television. I did watch. Uh, I've watched thing. a few of them. Yeah. What do you think about that? It's weird. Yeah. It's really weird. It's got to be weird for. It's weird know. when you see gestures like gestures you've done. Yeah. Done by somebody else. Yeah. Like in the first episode, mm -hmm. the sheriff is awakened and the wife rolls over and puts her arm around. Yeah. Him and it's just like. Wow, yeah. that's weird. Yeah. That's really freaky. It was, and I don't want. But I like it. I'm I'm loving it. I'm yeah, absolutely I'm loving it. And I don't want to talk specifics because I know people are going to catch up and do the streaming and binge. But yep. there yep. are quite a handful of very sure. unexpected tie-ins. Yeah, when Billy Bob dies, that. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> Wait a minute. Did I say? How could you know that? That wow. hasn't happened yet. Not cool. Did I say that? Oh. You know what? It's okay. Inside if it, voice. If it turns out to be true, then uh, people will just you know. They'll just be pissed off. They'll just be pissed off. Really pissed off. I mean, this podcast doesn't really, we don't, you know, plop as Doug Benson likes to say till Tuesday anyway. Right. So who's going to listen to it today? plop like a, you know, in a bowl? Yeah. Plop like a turd the in a bowl. The new, new episode plops. Like when it shows up on your, on your iTunes feed, it goes like, bloop. Like, plop. It makes the toilet mm -hmm. noise. They, they should work on that. <laughs> <laughs> really, they should. That's they, not a great thing. At least an option to turn it off. They've got nice. everything what else happened at the somewhere. marketing meeting for that? Like, at the Apple meeting, like, what, what sound should we use for podcasts? You know what it was? <laughs> I gotta go. I got a number two. Brilliant. Number two. Hmm. <laughs> at, Let's run with that. <laughs> Jobs was in his, his private bathroom, and they were all in the office. Bloosh. And they were like, what sound should we use? Blump, blump. We've got it. And that's, that's how Tim Cook... Rose to the top there. <laughs> I've got Just it. like a turd. Just like a turd. It's a rose to the top. <laughs> healthy turd. Healthy, yes. The healthy yeah, ones. Yeah, the healthy ones, yeah. We all know that. Uh, pardon me for just a few seconds. After you. Listeners, help Kevin Pollack's chat show stay free to download by completing this short, anonymous survey. It won't take longer than five minutes. You have the time. Your answers will help match our show with advertisers that best fit the sensibilities of our podcast and its listeners. That's you. Listeners who complete the survey will be entered in an ongoing monthly raffle to win a $100 Amazon gift card. What else are you doing that tries to get you a $100 Amazon gift card? Nothing. This is the thing you have to do. We promise not to share or sell your email address, and we won't send you an email unless you win. How are you gonna beat that? 
please go to podsurvey.com slash Pollock, P-O-L-L-A-K. That's podsurvey.com slash Pollock to take our survey and get a chance to win a $100 Amazon gift card. Thank you. Back to you, sir. Oh, wow. thank you very much. God. That was worthy of applause? I, I, have to yeah. say, I have to say, you don't really have to have the survey. I mean, after our last thing, isn't yeah. it just Kohler? I th- <laughs> <laughs> Shouldn't Kohler be the... So if Kohler is not sponsoring this yeah. show by next week... I know. After something that, is rotten. Bloosh. Rotten in the toilet world. Kohler. <laughs> so I'm watching TV, and there's an ad where they say, there are some things you don't want to touch, and now there's a touchless flush system on yeah. a Kohler yeah. toilet. Yeah. And I thought to myself, we've sold ourselves <laughs> everything we can possibly think We're of. We're done. We're finished. Yep. What else is... You literally don't have the time or the, you're a little too germaphobic to yeah. literally flush the toilet. Right, especially considering after you flush the toilet, the next place you're supposed to go is the sink. For, for 60,000 millennia, however long we've been on this planet, yeah. we've rolled around in our own feces. Yep. For most of them. I do it, that's my pre-show ritual. I can tell. Mm-hmm. It's not smell-o-vision, but I could tell. I know. And now we're up to this, now we're like, mm, I, I can't touch that toilet. Right. I don't wanna, mm. I mean, we have it in public restrooms, and you know the the, the mm. self flush toilets. But that's it's not effective. It it works about a tenth of the time. Yeah, it works about a tenth of the time. What's and what's better than when you have to take that horrible airport dump, and you're sitting there, and the toilet starts flushing on its own, and you get all that. I don't want to think about it. It it ruins my flight. Kohler. <laughs> <laughs> Kohler. You know those horrible self self flush toilets at the airport? Now you can have one at home. <laughs> You're welcome. We're Kohler. <laughs> you didn't ask for it, but here it is anyway. Uh, <laughs> so I would love to talk to you about what I think some would consider your finest film work. Wow. The John Travolta, Nicolas Cage masterpiece face off. There was an interesting moment. It felt like I was in a James Lipton moment. <laughs> you know? And then you did. I- I can lift in this shit up for you. Face off. <laughs> in? Face yeah, off. face off, okay. You essayed the role of, <laughs> the role of prison guard. Walton. <laughs> prison guard. In Walton. face off. Can we meet him? Yes. <laughs> so I don't okay. that. That's good. Good thank stuff, you. Sam. Oh, thank you good very stuff. much. Uh, what about it? That's what about just, how, how, where, Did you really shoot that on an o- offshore oil rig? No. Oh, no. That's we shot it in Eagle Rock. <laughs> <laughs> so might as well. I don't know if you know this, but in the last century, they used to make films in Los Angeles. I had no idea. Yeah. No. They used to make them here. No, I don't think oh, yeah. so. Right. Sure. I don't think sure. so. Not far from here. But we shot in Eagle Rock yeah. uh, at, a, at a substation in Eagle Rock, so that's where those scenes were shot. That's very cool. No. When yeah. we shot, when we shot, do no harm. Yeah, you uh, were having, we were all having a good laugh one day mm-hmm. because you uh, pointed out that you have played. The, the, there's three names or four names. That you, yeah, stands. A lot of stands. A lot of, a lot of stands. And tons of franks. Tons of franks. Yeah, there was a year where I played Frank, Frank. Franklin, Mr. Franks, and Frank <laughs> in a row. That's true. No, yeah. That's that's brilliant. Yeah. Now, do they now are those names the names you when they you audition for it yeah. or when they offer yeah, you, yeah, they yeah. don't they don't hire you and they go you know what now we no they Frank. didn't say we're gonna and uh, in bo- in Body of Proof yeah character's name's Bud Frank Morris his name is Frank nicknamed Bud. Uh, <laughs> I don't know, and the thing is that France, Francis is a family name. So like, I, I, I mean, my, my uncle's name is Francis, my yeah. cousin's name is Francis, Frank, Frank, my grandfather's Frank, his father was Frank. There's a lot of Franks, so it's, to be Frank. it's been plaguing you, is what you're saying. It's been chasing me around. Yeah. Chasing Isn't me around. Frank Morris the name of the uh, inmate who led the Alcatraz escape probably, in the 60s? Probably. I think it was. I got to ask the writer to see if they, they realized that. Chris Murphy. I'm yes. sure they did. You are correct. Thank you. Wow, look and at the, that. And the Anglin brothers. Was that, that's all right. It yep. fascinates me. Clarence, the, uh, Clarence Anglin and John Anglin. Yeah. 
And Alan West. They used to be incarcerated there. <laughs> <laughs> did, you, did, did you audition for that one? Yeah, I didn't and get they, it. They decided they, decide they were going to go. <laughs> they, were, they wanted a guy with a beard. <laughs> no, they said to themselves, we can actually get the real Sean Connery. <laughs> You know, he's retired we don't need now. It's really, really sad. So impression. any, I think if anyone writes a screenplay, like that's hey, absolutely right. Connery, terrific, fantastic. That's pretty good. He he uh, he wore a lot of fake hair for his whole life. I'll oh tell yeah, you. I'll tell you. Regular awesome. Ted Danson. Spoiler alert! What? What do you mean? Mary, I have something to tell you about your husband. <laughs> Uh, Mary watches the show, by the way. Huge Big fan. fan. Huge, huge fan, fan, Mary Steenburgen. Yeah. Very active in the chat room. Please yeah. send her our best. Yeah, I actually had to mute her. She just uh, keeps going. Do we have any questions from the chat room before I get into my So next anyway, I muted Mary five. Steenburgen today. <laughs> <laughs> any, any important questions, I should say? No, no? I, have, I have a tweet five for later, but I'll, I'll email you. Okay, we're going to get to that. Oh, okay. that's the T in the T5. That's the T5. Do you want to do the T5 first, or do you want to get into Zodiac first? Whatever you want to do. We're going to do the T5. Okay. Roll the thing. T5, T5, T5 do, you, uh, do you know the David Koechner? Uh, <laughs> yes, I'm often confused. Confused for David with, I didn't want to ask. No, I'm often confused for David Koechner. Uh, have the love you, Anchor Man. Thank you. Uh, hey, Thank you very why much. Why not? <laughs> yeah. You know what? I love him, and we did finally get to work together. We worked together in Paul. Ah, uh, yes. Both of us wore fake hair. <laughs> <laughs> It's true. Fantastic. You wore a big mustache, yeah. hat, hair. I had hair. It was fantastic. That's pretty great. Yeah, it was very funny. Oh. Keckner's great. He's, he's a really good guy. He's really phenomenal. funny. Yeah, I like him a lot. I, I'll be seeing him next weekend. Woohoo! So I will tell him. We Is he going to be on this show? He will not be. Uh, You're just going to see him. I'm going to see him with Kevin. Uh, Kevin and I are going to be down in Kansas City okay. next weekend for this annual charity thing that uh, David Koechner does with uh, Paul oh, Rudd, Rob cool. Riggle, Eric Stone Street, Jason Sudeikis. I'm not familiar with any of them, but I do know David Koechner. Uh, he's the only one I talk to there. Okay. I ignore yeah. all those other guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so here's how uh, the T5 works. Okay. It is a rapid fire series, uh, five questions. Okay. It's uh, this or that, Coke or Pepsi. Okay. No wrong answers. There's no wrong answers. Yeah, Kevin likes to say there's no right answers. I like to say there's no wrong answers. But there's no wrong, an there is a wrong answer with Coke or Pepsi. There is. I agree. And the answer is either because save your kidneys. Are you. That wasn't an answer. No. <laughs> just, was, he just totally he circumvented it. the rules. Yeah. <laughs> You just blew off the rules of your I own blew, fucking game. I blew man. off the rules a little bit. This is bullshit. You know, flip, you would not be the first guest to flip the table. Did they somebody flip the table? Who is it? Fred Willard flipped our table? Yeah, I don't that sounds so. right. Maybe. Yeah. Fred Willard removed his shirt. That did happen. That happened. Just that's saying, awesome. The, the bar has yeah. been set awfully that's, high, John. That's awesome. I would love to see Fred Willard without his shirt. <laughs> well, it happens very early on in the, uh, in the program okay. if you'd like I'm to go back and watch. It. I'm going to go home and watch it. I'm, I'm going to watch it now. You, guys <laughs> you know what? That's fine. Take, take a few minutes. Uh, all right. Are you ready to play? Yes. Here we go. Okay. Lewis or Oswald? Oswald. Uh, Fricassee or Arby's? Fricassee. Mimi or Kate? Mimi. Prowler or Tan Sierra? Ooh, Prowler. Gotta go with Prowler. One cent stamp or forever? Oh, forever. Three out of five. Very nice. Thank Very you. Very nice. <laughs> See, there were wrong answers. There yeah. were. Yeah. Apparently. That's all right. Just I, I won't tell you which, which ones. ones? No, I can't tell you which. It's like the SATs. It would bother you to know. Didn't bother me to know. It would bother SATs. you. You don't want to. Okay. You don't want to know. Fair enough. Uh, we did. Uh, did you get another? I uh, sent you another one. Oh me. boy! You know what? We're we're in the zone. Are you ready for another one? Yeah, sure. T five, T five, T five. Thank you. Carrie Russell or Dana Delaney? Who? That's a tough one. <laughs> that's a tough one. Man, that's a. Dana. All right, that's fair. That's fair. Officer Ned Dooley or Sheriff Ryan? Oh, um, oh, that's a really good one. Ned Dooley. Okay. Mermaid. Top half fish or bottom half fish? Oh, the bottom half is a fish. Right. Come on. Naked pumpkin run or polar bear plunge? Ooh. <laughs> Am I watching it or doing it? You're participating. <laughs> I'd go with the naked pumpkin run. That's to say that's what I'd do. I don't who needs that. And finally, mustache or goatee? Oh, goatee. 
you know, go team. Very nice. You improved four out of five on that one. Wow. I'm very, yeah, I'm you very proud of it. Bring out another five. Maybe I can get <laughs> right. No, no one ever T5, gets them all. Nobody T5, ever gets them all right. T5 forever now. <laughs> <laughs> I hope we were rolling on that. <laughs> Kekner's got some competition. we got to run those side by side. <laughs> Um, all right, let's get into <laughs> let's get into Zodiac. Okay. Um, which, uh, boy, is that a fantastic fucking yeah, movie? Yeah, that's amazing. My God, um, how, how did that come about? Was it straight audition? Audition for it, you okay. know. Audition for it, um, and uh, then auditioned again with Fincher, mm -hmm. and uh, he showed me the wall, which was the timeline of every murder, yeah, and where everybody was. Yeah. Um, he had it up. Uh, he had a historian that he'd hired. Yeah. To work with him on the film, and uh, so there was exhaustive research done, uh, and uh, the show, obviously, the movie really reflects that. And uh, Arthur Lee Allen, I had videotape, I had the books, I had transcripts, I had pictures of his actual trailer mm -hmm. the house. I had a lot of different stuff to, to work with. Yeah, um, yeah, it was a, it was an amazing project, and he's an you know he's a he's an amazing. Director, uh, he's an amazing director in a lot of different ways, but his his acting directing, the the portion of the work where he's working with you as an actor, I found very. He reminded me very much of the director who I worked with at the Guthrie for years, Garland oh. Wright. So, in terms of his sensibility, his uh, his uh, quietness, and also the way in which you, it's best to watch him give a note, um, because what he says is important, but how he says it is probably. What his body does while he's giving you the note is probably mm -hmm. going to give you more information than the note itself. And what what kind of notes did he give you? Um, there were all kinds of different notes uh, in the in the playing of the scene in the uh, in the uh, you know at the refinery. Yeah, that's and, a, that's um, boy, is that a scene? And we played that for about a day and a half. We played that scene. Wow. Which is, uh, um, and it was with an amazing group of actors. Marty Lodge, who played my boss in. Mm -hmm. Uh, 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 who I knew from before. I knew him from D.C. and um, uh, um, and Paul. Uh, I mean, um, um, not Paul. Uh, Anthony Edwards. Anthony Edwards and, and Mark Elias Ruffalo Cotes and Elias Elias Cotes. And Elias is. I mean, they're all four, all four actors, but the three of them, because I got to sat, sit down with them, it was like a jazz combo. It was really oh, wow. extraordinary. So every little thing, yeah. every little change that was done would affect everybody and it was alive the whole time and present the whole time and it was really uh, it was really great and so yeah. the notes were like that too I mean Fincher's notes were like that yeah and since the lighting package was so um, presented in other words they didn't have to relight a lot they could yeah. move the cameras not relight relight a lot um, it was a it was a long it was a long full first day and then a half day and at the end of the half day all four of us were like we could just keep going. But we weren't tired. Nobody was tired. <laughs> Nobody was like, let's not say these words anymore. It was all, yeah. everybody was as fresh as when we started. It was wow. really, it was a terrific day. That's great. Yeah. Now, here, now uh, my question, I guess, is obviously I, it had to have come up as something that you discussed with Fincher, whether or not your character, Arthur Lee Allen, had actually committed these murders. Um, yeah, it did come up, and uh, you know, uh, in the second audition with him, he asked me to uh, read the scene as if he was not guilty. Right. And I did, and uh, uh, and uh, we we went under the assumption that that was the acting portion of it. Yeah. It was clear from the film that yeah. Fincher's certain that he did it. Yeah. Um, and you know, I think it was. I have to say that for me, um, I don't know that he did it. Yeah. Um, uh, I don't know that he did it. But the movie is really about obsession. It's not about the Zodiac. It's about right. the infectious nature of obsession. Yes. And everybody gets the virus. So oh. um, the, the Zodiac has the virus, and then he transfers it to uh, you know, the Smith, newspaper, yeah. to Graysmith, who, and, to, um, and to Mark Ruffalo's character. And it's an interesting juxtaposition between and Robert Downey's character. Mm -hmm. So um, those two characters are destroyed by the obsession. Yeah. And Gyllenhaal's character of Graysmith is almost destroyed by it. So um, 
destroys yeah. his relationship. It destroys yeah. his relationship. Destroys his, you know, his job. It, he stopped being a cartoonist to do this thing, and so in some ways it destroyed him as well. So I think that that obsession, that infectious nature of obsession, is really what I think the movie's about. Wow, I think I think you're dead on with that. Uh, you're familiar with the film American Psycho. I'm familiar with it. Okay. I did not see it. Oh, all right, fair enough. Yes. Uh, so Willem Dafoe. Uh, is, is in the movie, and he plays uh, basically a, a private detective mm -hmm. who is investigating the disappearance of a character who we, the audience, know uh, our lead character has dispatched. Mm -hmm. And so there's a, a handful of, of scenes between Defoe and Christian Bale, and when you watch these scenes, Defoe comes off looking a little crazy. You're like, you, at That's any moment... Shocking. Yeah, at any moment you think he could, he's going to whip out his gun on this guy and arrest him. Okay. And it, or he's going to walk away and go, all right, nice meeting you, and then leave and never see him again. Mm -hmm. And I always wondered what the hell that was. And then uh, come to find, uh, the, uh, uh, Mary Heron, the director, would say, all right, in this take, when you're sitting down to lunch with him, you know he did it. You straight up know he did it. And so uh, let, it, let it affect everything you say. And then they'd do two takes like mm -hmm. that. And mm -hmm. then on take three, she'd say, you're pretty sure this guy's innocent. Mm -hmm. And then the next two takes, she'd say, you're, you're wavering. He mm -hmm. might have done, he mm -hmm. might have. Mm -hmm. And then she would cut together his coverage. What, what, he wa what she wanted. What she wanted, yeah. using yeah, one take where he knows he did it, yeah. one, this line where yeah. he has no idea. Yeah. And so I always thought, uh, after, not always, but after hearing that about that movie, I always wondered if maybe that had played into the Zodiac stuff at all, where was that, did he say one take where you did it and you're guilty, one take no, where you No, I don't remember those kind of notes. I do okay. remember notes about the various, um, uh, I, I mean, they were so subtle and it's, you know, it's it's hard to go over it, you know, you gotta pull the full, you gotta pull the full, full Kirk Lazarus to go <laughs> into it, but, but uh, I, I do think that what, what, he did something similar to that yeah. in, the, in the voiceover work. Um, myself, um, Fleischer, and the three people who played the Zodiac at murder scenes. Yeah. Um, stuntmen or actors, both. And uh, the five of us all did the voiceovers that were the Zodiac. Wow. And then he mixed those voices together into a single voice and he modulated when it was any individual voice, mine, Charles Fleischer, or the other three actors. Oh, that's so, pretty brilliant. So, um, it, since it, the movie is about trying to figure out who it is, right. He made that choice. It was a brilliant choice. And and when you, when I'm I'm watching the movie and Ioni Sky is in and you know this guy picks her up and he mm -hmm. says this thing about throwing her baby out the window. Um, uh, that you know he highlights my voice in that in that last line. Um, and it's one of the few times that he highlights my voice in it. Uh, and that guy wasn't the Zodiac. Huh. So he was manipulating the audience through the soundscape yeah. with the voices throughout, which I think is that, know, that that's is. the kind of filmmaking that you go, okay, this I'm just, uh, you know, come on. <laughs> How the fuck do you think of that shit? <laughs> you know, like, you know, and he's yeah. just like top of his head. Yeah. You know, he's like, oh, yeah. I saw on the third day of filming, you know, we were doing the scene with the squirrels at the trailer. I pull it and kind of get we're walking back to space camp. I said, uh, "How you? How's the show going?" He goes, "We're about ten days behind." I was like, "This is day three. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> How can you be ten days behind?" Oh, he's. I'm not worried about it. Yeah. I said, "Why?" He goes, "Oh, well, you know." And he starts thinking off the top of his head. Yeah. Uh, I got a scene I know I, I didn't really want to shoot anyway, so I can cut that. And um, there's these two pieces of equipment that I don't need, and then. These days I can trim into, I can fold those in. So that's the 10 days. Wow. And it wasn't like he was, had it in, you know, it wasn't like he'd had a production meeting. Yeah. <laughs> we were just walking back to the trailers. <laughs> you know? Uh, the guy, his, his view of filmmaking is so holistic that he thinks of time, money, equipment, all of the, all of the apparatus of the filmmaking as one thing. Yeah. And he doesn't, it doesn't, you know, it's m completely malleable to him. It's utterly and completely um, fluid, yeah. which is extraordinary. And he's very Kubrickian in his, uh, 
he has a, a way the scene has to a certain scene has to look. Yeah. And if it doesn't look exactly like he's imagining, he will do it again and again and again. I, you know, I, I don't know if that's what's going on, or I don't know if that's what it is. Well, the only reason I say that, and maybe that's just the wrong analysis, no, but no. I, I remember seeing some behind-the-scenes footage of the movie, and there's uh, there was some scene, it's not even in the movie, where uh, Gyllenhaal gets into the car and then tosses a book on the passenger seat. Uh-huh. And it's just, just a quick kind of insert shot, yeah. really. Yeah, yeah. And you can see the clapboard. Uh, take take twenty eight, take thirty six, yeah, yeah. take forty five, yeah. and it's Gyllenhaal, and he's literally he leans down into the camera, and he, li- he looks into the camera, and down the barrel and goes, "It's take sixty six. Want to make sure we all got that?" Yeah, my favorite quote from the movie. <laughs> I wasn't there when it happened, but he walked up to Jake. Uh, I heard this from a crew member. He walked up to Jake, and he's like. Delete the first 20. So. <laughs> I mean, how demoralizing is that? <laughs> oh, that's dreadful. Um, I, I think that, I don't know that that's what's happening. I don't know that he's trying to get this vision into. Okay. I th- This is my take on it. And again, yeah. he's a meticulous person, I, whatever I would, you do. I would defer to But he's watching, people. I mean, I was watching him watch a, he has a big monitor, so he doesn't have a little monitor, just a big monitor. Yeah. And for the first 15 times the shot was being done, this is what his eyes were doing. Hmm. He was looking to see what every single thing was in the frame. I mean, he was just trying to make sure that the, everything in the frame is something that he wanted in the frame. Yeah. I don't think that he's trying to match this. I think he's trying to paint. Ah. I think he's trying to. I think he's trying. He's 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 working with the image. Yeah. He's not working with this to put the image out. Yeah. He's working he's with working. the image. It's outside of himself. That's my experience of it. I know. I'm sure. You know what? And that I is, don't know that that's the case. No, no. I mean, no. Uh, you, you should have first him first on hand. the Kevin Pollock chat show. Would you Get do us? It. Would you give him a call? Would you text I, you know, him right gonna, now? Yeah. And let him know. Know. Okay. Second. Thank you. Seven. Just, oh yeah. I'm just saying. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, can I go? I'm oh, just saying. Oh yeah. Davey! <laughs> What's up, brother? Yeah, yeah. Well, say to hello to Marty for me. Listen, I got a question for you. Uh, no. Uh, yeah, we'll talk later. Oh, this is Satan. I got to take this. Oh, weird. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I'll put it to voicemail. <laughs> Nothing can happen when you no. send Satan speaker. to voicemail. Put him on speaker. Tell him I'm Jewish. It'll be great. Why? Does Satan have something wrong with Jews? We somehow? don't have Satan. We don't have uh, the devil, we don't have uh, hell. Just because you don't have Satan doesn't mean he doesn't have you. I guess. I'm just saying, he my rabbi. He believes in Jews. My, who doesn't? They're real. We're not like They're real. They're not like They're, unicorns. No. We're a real thing. We're a real thing. <laughs> a real thing. Damn Over it. the top of the program, Stop I it. added the ch to Reich. Oh, that's right. Um, <laughs> so. The call back well, to ch. 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 Uh, uh, another film uh-huh. that I saw you in and just thought, well, actually, wait, I, before I get to that, the, the look that you give uh, to Gyllenhaal yeah. at the end of the movie mm-hmm. in the hardware store, um, it's, pretty, it's pretty terrifying. And I, I, I hadn't thought about it until Brian Cranston was on uh, Conan O'Brien. Yeah. Yeah, I saw, you know exactly. Oh, well, actually, I saw him on. I saw him do the thing on when he just froze out everything. Exactly. Yeah, froze the world. Just for, you freeze the world out, yeah. expressionless, and it depending on who you are yeah. and what you've done in the character, yeah. it can be the most terrifying thing in the world. Yeah. That's your camera right there. Do you want to just freeze us out for five yeah. seconds? I, I may cry. I don't have his skills. I gotta say. No, you don't. Instant skills. Just, just, ex- just nothing. Just. I, okay. I'd be so grateful. Ready? This is for the camera, right? Please. Son of a bitch. How was it? Son of a bitch, John! I can't even. I'll never. This face, try it. I could try never. It. There's the camera. I could never. There's I could. the camera. Try it. I'm going to try this. Okay, I'm going to see it. <clears throat> All right. <clears throat> You're going to freeze them out. Nope, can't do it. Can't do it. You you nope. you looked at yourself. That I was didn't. The I didn't. I felt myself. Oh, I looked. I at felt you. myself. You felt yourself. I felt myself. 
It was. It you, was you thought it was, it was a lie. It was inauthentic. Oh, I see. I don't have that. You have to reach your inner cold. I do. You have to reach your inner Mr. Freeze. <laughs> <laughs> if revenge is a dish best served cold, <laughs> then put on your Sunday best. <laughs> because this is going to be a fantastic feast of frozen themes. <laughs> that was like the worst. 207 the worst, shows. You know, Finally, someone quotes Robin and, uh, Batman and Robin. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, John. We're finished now. This has been the secret code. <laughs> this has been what we've searching for the whole Time. Let's wrap it up, that everybody. Was my, that was my Soviet unlock key. So <laughs> finally, now I have to kill the queen. Um, uh, I wanted to talk to you uh, briefly about Gran Torino. Okay. Uh, which is a, a great uh, understated movie. I think it's. Uh, you say that, you know, like you have this adoring thing around Zodiac. You adore Fargo, and then you say, Gran Torino, it's this great, you know, it it's, is a, good. it's a good movie. Look, it's a, it's a, it's really, a good movie. It's a, I, I, I enjoyed it mostly. You're great in it. There's no question about that. But I'm not going to sit here and I'm say not, it's my favorite East okay. movie. I think he's Fair a enough. brilliant director. Fair enough. A brilliant director. When you've directed as much as he has, right? I yeah. mean, aren't you going to have, like, I mean, the depth and breadth of the material that he's yeah. done, you're going to have a wide variety of, uh, right. you know, of good ones and bad ones. Yes. I mean, look at Woody Allen, for fuck's sake. I mean, you know, the, the Woody Allen fall project, he's only been doing that 40-something years. Yeah. So yeah. there are a few in there that aren't uh, great. And he's I'm not... had, uh, you know, in his defense, yeah. he's had one or two legal bills to pay. Are we talking about Eastwood or Mr. Allen, Allen. has had one or two legal bills to pay? So, so what you're saying he's making pushing, them? Though. He's making the movies just to I cover think he legal just loves expenses. Making movies, frankly, I don't think it has anything to do with that. I think he just likes making movies, and he goes to make a movie. Yeah. That's what he does. That is what he does. Yeah. yeah. I think that people like go. Well, they should. You know, they should really quit while they're. You know, they should. And it's like, why? Yeah. Why should? Why should they quit? Why should? It, I mean, if they can still make movies and they can still get movies made. Yeah. Why do you want to stop people from doing that if they can do it? I mean, if they want to do it, why, why not let them do it? I, 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 find it, I find it kind of, I find that a kind of a criticism of the young against the old, mostly. Yeah. I think it's kind of silly. And I heard that uh, Tarantino is like, this is a young man's game and mm -hmm. blah, blah, blah. I hope he never stops. He, ha he was, when, when we shot Bastards, he was only 44, I think. And, and he said, or 46, and he said, adamantly, when I turn 60, my filmmaking days are over. That sounds like a guy who doesn't think he's going to make it to 60. And well, no, he said, and he said, and, and I quote, I'll become a man of letters. So I'll, I'll, do, I'll do my best writing in my 60s. So he's just going to write after so that. So he's going to write books and novels and, and. He can do anything. He could do anything, although I, I questioned him on the day. I said, so you're telling me you're, you're, you're 59, you turn 60, you have a great party, the whole thing, and then you're 61 years old, and all of a sudden, someday at the breakfast, idea comes the up. idea comes to you. Yeah. You're going to say, I'll just do it as a book. And he goes, well, I, I don't know. I mean, I'm, uh, I'm pretty sure. And then he said, I'm going to cut all your lines now. Yep. <laughs> he didn't say it with his mouth. He, he said it with his eyes. So <laughs> he it said it very with his eyes. Very expressive eyes. Um, uh, so that guy rocks, I, I've, I've, uh, I've had uh, a few other friends who've had the, the pleasure of working with Clint Eastwood. Yeah. And uh, talk about a guy who knows exactly what he wants. I, you know, I mean, my experience, again, I, I have, you know, when I say I work with these people, I mean, I've had a good fortune of working with them, but it's not like I've been hanging around on the set for six or eight months, you know what I mean? Well. It's like, you know, well, and days. Especially, I was going to say, well, in the hours Eastwood, I've it's... spent observing Mr. Eastwood's <laughs> process, <laughs> you know, I mean, in the relatively short hours, mm -hmm. in the 26 hours. There I've it is. Yeah, he's nine to five, right? Yeah, we didn't ever work to five. <laughs> Nine to three, four, four, thirty-four. Yeah, <laughs> I was scheduled that's, for ten days on the movie. I worked three. That's insanity. Yeah, I mean, just I think what he is. I guess I, uh, for me, and again, I. It's all from the outside. I've never asked him about it. So, I see him as a guy who likes jazz, right? So that's what his thing is. He loves jazz, and he yeah. loves what jazz does. And jazz is about people who come together for a period of time, sit down, and play what they play, and then leave. Yeah, and then you capture it. And there's not you don't want to you don't want to belabor the point you don't want to make it you know he's the opposite of Fincher in that way he, he doesn't care whether or not it's raining or sunny <laughs> you know <laughs> he doesn't care he wants to see what's happening then that's what he wants to capture yeah and if he can he tries to capture it in the most f the most fully simple way that he can 
at least that movie. Yeah. I mean, it's going to be different with Jersey Boys, I'm sure, and it was different right. with other films that he's done. But with right. that movie, it was like, if we can shoot this scene in one shot, we'll shoot it in one shot. Mm. And uh, his, he's worked with the same people for 50 years. Yeah. Uh, some of them, you know, the women who have been doing his hair and makeup have been working with him for, you know, 50, 60 years. And the job just gets easier for them. Well, the hair lady, at least. Yeah. Well, I don't know. It probably gets harder. <laughs> Uh, you'd be amazed at how hard it is <laughs> so I to would. work on my hair. <laughs> really? When you talk <laughs> about the perfect hair that you, Sam Levine, have, well, you know, you don't know what it's like. I don't. Yeah. But so. I will someday. Yeah. I I know. All I think I speak for all follically challenged people when I say bald people have harder hair problems than you think they do. Anyway. I'm I'm yeah I'm going the way going, of the you're going I'm the way going of all flesh. And I, I can, I'll agree. Back to Clint Eastwood, though. Please. Uh, you know, the camera people have worked with him for years. Yeah. Everybody's worked for him. So there's no, there's literally no, all the energy on the set is, it's, the, it's one of the quietest sets you're ever going to work on. Everybody knows, you know, if they haven't, if they've had the discussions at the production meetings, they don't ever have to have them again, <laughs> you know. And occasionally, like there was one shot in this movie where we were doing the, uh, where I was giving him the shave, and his cameraman came over with Tom Stern, who is his DP, and said, "You know, if I put the camera here, Clint, we can do this all in one." And he goes, "Okay." That easy. Yeah. So that was it. It wasn't like, oh, we've got storyboards, we have to get to them, and this, no, that, he, it was... He know that's all been done, clearly. Yeah. That's all been done, and it's, all, yeah. it's either been done, or they just now know, yeah. you know, because they have, it's a symbiotic kind of relationship yeah. on the sets. Uh, uh, it seemed to me about that one. Mm. Uh, and we had, uh, you know, I had a great time. And we improved a lot of really? the scenes. A lot of the, uh, a lot of the chitter-chatter about the two worst guys you could choose <laughs> yes, to teach a guy how to be a man. An if you're like to do a scene. survey yes. of people, those would be the two guys you would not want to have somebody under the tutelage of. Yeah. So, so it was, there was a lot of improv in that scene. Hmm. And, uh, you know, he can, he can bring it. I'll bet he can. Yeah. <laughs> he can bring it. So the, you, you, did you, you, you audition on tape for that, right? Yeah, I didn't meet him until... You don't meet him until you no. show up on the day. Yep. And then that's that, and you work yeah. three days. Yep. That's brilliant. And, you know, um, it's, yeah, you know exactly what he's doing. My favorite moment, though, uh, uh, think about it now, we were doing the funeral scene, and he's, you know, he's looking, he's looking around at it, and he's walking around as director, and he goes, okay, final touches. And, you know, he doesn't say that, but, you know, it's final touches, and they come over and they put a little powder on him, and then they bring up a little stool, Little three uh, three ladder thing. He climbs up, gets in the casket. <laughs> <laughs> Whenever you're ready. <laughs> and then it's like, oh. we got it. Climb out of the casket. <laughs> I feel like I feel like that's how in real life Clint Eastwood will die. Is he'll just go to the cemetery. What? I think it'll be what? in the middle of a shoot. <laughs> <laughs> I think it'll be like, okay, <laughs> whenever, whenever you're ready. I think. And then it'll be like, <laughs> they'll roll out. Uh -huh. And it'll be like, Clint? Huh? Clint? Clint, who are you talking to? I'm talking to Obama. No, he's done. He's he just doesn't to ever get out of the casket. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> well, I'm very, I, I'm, uh, again, uh, humbled and jealous. I, I would love to work with well, Mr. Eastwood. He, he, he too is probably in the chat room now. He won't, uh, he won't read me on tape. Actually, he did. He, they, I read for Jersey Boys. Did you? I did. How'd it go? Uh, still waiting to hear. Okay. There's still time. It don't open until next week. Yeah. So, fingers crossed. Yep. <clears throat> uh, uh, I don't think this is a spoiler, uh, and I don't remember signing any sort of non-disclosure agreement. Eh, just come after me. Uh, I read for the role of uh, Joe Pesci. Oh, Joe Pesci is in. Joe Pesci's in the in the in the feature. Young Joe Pesci is in the movie. Uh, yeah, oh, you read for young okay. Joe Pesci. Yes, I did not read for Joe Pesci the actor. I read for Joe I Pesci the actor. I could totally see that. I could totally see that. I had yeah. I had things working against me at the time. One, I had a full beard. 
So wait, you were playing young, young Joe Pesci or Joe Pesci's character's younger version? I was I'm playing thinking. young, real life Joe Pesci. Okay. In the movie, I can in, see that. in real he grew life, up in the neighborhood or whatever. Yeah, in real life, Pesci oh, cool. worked at like a bowling alley or something when he was a teenager, and introduced one of the seasons to some of the others or something like that. I don't know. They didn't release the whole script; just little mm. sides. Uh, but uh, I'm I'm curious to see it because I even going in, I was like, I know they're gonna hire uh, not a person by name, but just like a type. I know the type. Well, what did you have the beard for? Uh, I was shooting a, a, a feature. Today. Was it a biblical feature? <laughs> <laughs> what was the full beard for? It was for another project. I, I had already. You don't want to tell shooting. us what the project is? I was. It was for. It. I wasn't a feature. It was a web series. Web series. Okay, web called, series. Yeah. Okay, but, so you don't have to mention. It. <laughs> yeah, better that you don't. Don't it's bring it up. It's better that I don't. Nobody. It's better nobody that I don't. We were watches. in the middle of shooting. We'd already shot. And I, and I had the audition during the week, and then I had to shoot the following weekend, so I, I could not shave the no, beard. No, you couldn't shave the beard. So it worked against me, I, I, you know. But I said I had pictures without the beard. I'm, I'm, I'm fine with that. I, I think that it's, you know. I, I, I never mean, thought it was my part. I never thought it was Then it part. wasn't going to be yours. Yeah, yeah. you already. You already you eliminated yourself. Oh, no, I've had plenty of times where I go in and. That is why you failed. Schwarzenegger? Yep. That's what <laughs> I um, once again, Schwarzenegger. Once again, we go back to back. I always, everybody I do does Schwarzenegger. Yeah. Um, <laughs> my my brother Max is texting me something that I was going to get to. I was going to get to okay. this. Uh, so he, he doesn't have to panic, but I was going to save it until we got closer to the end, which we are fast approaching. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lift in this just for a minute. Okay. Just for a minute. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> I'm going to do the Harvey Keitel then. All right, you go ahead. That, that this was Harvey Keitel. If you're going to do lip, then I'm going to do Harvey Keitel. With Here we go. Okay. 1997. <laughs> Protests. I'll go to the white, go to the white. Protests. Perhaps the greatest disaster picture of the 90s. Tommy Lee Jones had to save all of Los Angeles from a volcano from the Blue Bay Tar Pits. One of the heroes of the film is Stan, the MTA worker. Can we meet Stan? That's my Harvey Keitel. That's great. <laughs> Nailed it. Had no idea what he was doing. <laughs> like he was, just, he was looking at Lipton like, the fucking guy's pro. <laughs> I thought I was gonna talk to the kids. I didn't, I didn't realize there was... <laughs> Who the fuck is this guy? <laughs> uh, what do you want to know about Stan? I, I'm Olberg? sorry. I'm sorry. It's just that that <sighs> everything about that movie. It's uh, uh, they, I call it a guilty pleasure movie. Is that fair to call it? Oh yeah. Okay. It is oh, a guilty yeah. pleasure movie. Oh yeah. It's ridiculous. It's yeah. absolutely oh, yeah. ridiculous. Yeah. But your death scene in the movie. Spoiler. Whoa. Alert. God damn. How long does it spoil? Didn't somebody do this already? How long is a spoiler? I mean, 1997, you can't really spoil it, alert, can you? I think you give it like two weeks for like a film and like maybe a week for a television So we're show. well past that. We're well past oh, yeah. it? Yeah, well, yeah. you know what? Fuck you. I rescind the spoiler alert. If yeah, you haven't you seen much. Volcano by now, that's on you. <laughs> that's on you. <laughs> you should be ashamed of yourself. I won't take responsibility for your your inaction over the previous yes. 16 years to get your shit together. So what about Stan again? The death scene. <laughs> yeah. The jumping into the lava. The jumping into lava. Yeah. And the throwing of the, the conductor. Yes. You shot with real lava. <laughs> yes, we shot with the real lava. That was one of the tricks of the yeah. trade. We shot with real lava. I mean, it's funny. Even though real lava yeah. in an enclosed space like that <laughs> would kill you with the chloritic acid, mm -hmm. you know, the, the acid that it puts out, Sure. we still shot with real lava. Wow. Yeah, that's the kind of commitment. They said, them. we're just going to go... Yeah. With the algae from you know McDonald's shakes. And I said, no. No. <laughs> <laughs> I said, I'm not going to do this thing. Yeah. Unless we have real lava. They got, they got a lava wrangler? I said Stan is not going to do this thing. No. Unless there's real lava. Yeah. Yeah. Were you tempted at any point during your coverage to say, I'm melting! Or, oh, what a world? No. Did either no, of those creep no, into your No, neither no. one. Neither one. Did neither you one. know when you were shooting? Because presumably, uh, 
they finish most of that scene in post. Yeah, good did, amount of did it. Did you know it was going to look, that, did they give you an idea of like, you're going to see Stan oh, yeah. lose his legs? Well, I mean, I'm standing on, I'm standing on a, like, a platform. Actually, I met one of the guys who made the, pla I saw one of the guys who made the platform, met him, you know, however many years ago. But his wife, I'm working with his wife right now in a, oh. in a feature called The Invitation. His wife is an actress. She's really wonderful, Michelle Krusak, and his name is Matt. And Matt built the platform that, uh -huh. I, that I stood on in and was slowly, gradually lowered, yeah, gradually, gradually lowered, not lava. Uh. And um, yeah, so I knew I knew I was going to shrink down in the course of the melting of the lava. Oh. Melting of the lava. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny what choices you make, like in those circumstances, because you're going, okay, I'm going to buy this. Like yeah. I'm going, I'm saying yes to this. So. Um, so when I was talking to the director, Mick Jackson, I said, you know, the moment that, you know, the voice stops is the moment when the diaphragm melts. <laughs> like, <laughs> when your diaphragm melts. Yeah. So, like, you're going for it, right? You're acting the diaphragm melting. Yeah. You know? So that's what I did. I acted my diaphragm melting at the oh, moment. Oh, that's pretty good. Yeah. 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 Most actors go their whole careers. They don't get to do they the don't diaphragm get to melting. They don't do the diaphragm melting choice. No. No. So, again, jealous. And, by the way, I'm not talking about you know, a vaginal diaphragm. I'm talking about the physical diaphragm in your body. At first, I, I was going to say I, I understand. At saying. first, I was going to say I understand, but now I'm thinking maybe you made the wrong choice. What would that? What would that? How would that choice be? Maybe, about? maybe you're stand. the actor. You tell okay, us. Let me let me see if I can do it now. Maybe this is okay. <laughs> this is the choice <laughs> of my diaphragm melting inside my <laughs> vagina. I didn't say Stan has a vagina. I'm well, saying, he, had, he would have to. And you could probably. He would have to. Let me try it now. Okay. Let me try it. Okay. Okay. Ah! Ah! Ooh, ah! <laughs> Seem get, to work for the room. Get, get Mick work Jackson for the back here. Get Mick. We've got special edition bonus features coming up. 20th anniversary edition. I can't edition. believe I just did a choice of a woman's I'm, <laughs> diaphragm I'm, melting in her this vagina. Whole time, this whole time. That's, that's what I've been trying to get out of you. Now, I feel bad. We're, we're, we're running short on time, okay. and there are so many other things I wish I could have talked to you about. Uh, do you want to do a lightning round? Uh, sure. Crazy Stupid Love? Love it. Yeah? <laughs> I, as do I. Okay, that's a terrible idea. Shutter Island? Uh, well, I, 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 that was the opposite. I shot, I was supposed to be on for 10 weeks, work 15. Oh, motherfucker, why didn't wow. I lead off with this? Yeah, there you oh, go. Oh, my God. Well, here's what we're going to have to do is have you back on. Okay. When Kevin is here. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because he's going he's gonna to fix everything I fucked up. Mm -hmm. uh, lastly, in the feature Mercury Rising, uh, yes. starring Bruce Willis, you played Martin Lynch. Any yes. relation? No, but it was funny to have Lynch on my nameplate, like I was an, uh, uh, an, um, um, a heating air conditioning guy, Lynch on it. There that you was go. pretty cool. I had that shirt for a long time. Well done. Yeah. Um, well, that's that's it. I mean, uh, I, I cannot thank you enough. Thank uh, you. For your time. Thank you very much. Um, and there is one last thing. Yes. As you know. Yes. I appreciate I, the I heads up. I did warn you. My, my pleasure. Uh, are, do you need to go over the rules again? Uh, Bad Larry King? Yes. We do not want done. a good impression. Done and done. Okay. <laughs> you reveal something about yourself yes. as Larry. Yes. Uh, and then you throw to the phones. Okay. And uh, when you're ready, uh, you look right down the barrel okay. And, uh, okay. and, and have at it. Okay. <clears throat> His shoulders are so weird, aren't yeah. they? They're amazing. Okay. <laughs> you're back with Larry King live? I've replaced my shoulders with a hanger. <laughs> <laughs> yep, so Lanny, go. <laughs> that is that is truly how you play the Larry King game. Very well done, sir. Um, well, like I said, thank you so much, John. It means the world to me that you would come and thank sit down you, Sam, and, and chat with me. Appreciate today. it. Um, so sit there uh, for thirty seconds while I wrap things up for okay. everyone. Uh, we did it. Uh, thank you so much to everyone who hung in there. Um, uh, I want to say thank you to Jason McIntyre. Thanks for having me. And I, uh, two things before you totally say oh, goodbye. Oh, by all means. Uh, chat room, very supportive. They Good. thought you did a wonderful job. Thank and you, really Chatter. invoked uh, the Kevin of the Kevin Pollack chat show. Well, you know. And the other request was if you did a walk-in, like a little bit, just to, you know, really hammer it home. You know, uh, it's... I feel it's, like you're going to say no right now. It's not that I'm, it's that, 
that you can't ask me to do the thing that the I'm not. The, why don't you do the chat room? Why don't you do your Kevin Pollack impression? Yeah, come on. Oh, I'll do it. I'll do. I can do Kevin Pollack doing walk in. I guess. Yeah, do that. Do that. Is that. Do that. <clears throat> hey, what? What? That's all I got. That was really good. Though. I think it was good enough. I, I think it was good enough. It. I essence, really, I really felt that Kevin was here. He was doing Christopher Walken. Well, that's that's all that matters, really. If you so follow. now, when you do yeah. inside the actor's studio, and I will, Lipton will say, "Let's talk about <laughs> the Kevin Pollard <laughs> chat show, <laughs> episode two hundred seven, <laughs> <laughs> and your." Channeling of Kevin Pollack as Christopher Walken. <laughs> I think I think we my are. My Larry just, King and my uh, and your Lipton, my Larry your King Lipton and my Lipton are kind of the same person. I, I think in the same neighborhood. We, yeah. we are this close from Lipton citing podcasts now. <laughs> As <laughs> much. No, he's going to be doing podcasts. Yeah. He's going to cut to podcast things. Oh, wow. Um. <laughs> Third year Bradley has a question. <laughs> oh. um, well, uh, so thank you, chat room. Thank you, Jason McIntyre. Thank you, Dr. Kenny Chen. Uh, did you have any questions that we didn't get to? Oh. Save them. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> thank you out there in the booth to the one and only Josh Negrin manning the whole thing by himself today. Thank you to our social media maven, Danielle Overland. Uh, thank you to Samantha Ward on makeup. And thank you to our uh, godfather and godmother, uh, Kevin Pollack and Jamie Foxx, out in wherever you are. Uh, in and, a plane. Uh, on a plane, right presumably. Uh, that's it. Enjoy the rest of your Father's Day. And as always, fuck off.